Hello everybody and welcome back to more Let's Play Star Trek Online. This time we are making an update on the Federation side, revisiting Ensign Ricky. It has been a while since we've been on Ensign Ricky. Uh, as you all recall, Ensign Ricky is my character that I have used to level up on the Federation side and record those videos to show you the Star Trek Online on the Federation faction. And so I will continue to use Ensign Ricky in showing you all the wonderful Federation side or Federation faction uh, things that are in the game. This update is to let you know what I'm going to do in the future with Ensign Ricky and to show you a few things, show you what I've been working on with Ensign Ricky and to show you a few uh, things of where we're headed. Uh, of what I'm going to do in the future basically. So basically I am recording this video post uh, Legacy of Romulus update. That means the Legacy of Romulus expansion, free expansion for the game has been released. In addition to creating a whole Romulan faction which you uh, see me working on with um, the, uh, the Romulan character, um, they have added new things for the Federation side. And just a note, they've also added some for the KDF side, and I'll get into that on the other character for that. But for the Federation side, there are some things that I want to show you, because they are brand new, thanks to Legacy of Romulus. Um, first of all, and we will get to this, not right now, but in the future, um, they released a whole new series of missions uh, for the Federation side. This is new. And actually these are not unique to the Federation. They are shared between all factions, but they're new missions nonetheless. And part of uh, Ensign Ricky's progression is obviously he needs to play these missions because they're brand new and he hasn't played them yet. So in the future I will get to recording this series of missions. It's called Wasteland and it comes right after the Klingon War uh, missions now, which ends with um, now Temporal Ambassador. They have, what they've done is they've put Temporal Ambassador, which was the anniversary mission for this year, at the end of the Klingon War mission after Past Imperfect. Um, and of course that's where we got our um, Enterprise C from. Uh, of course we've played that mission already and I believe I've showed that. Uh, so that ends the Klingon War. Then right after that they've squeezed in right right there this new thing called wasteland and it's all about uh, Nimbus uh, the planet of galactic peace if you've watched Star Trek 6 the um, no excuse me Star Trek 5 um, then you will understand what Nimbus is Star Trek 5 uh, the original series Star Trek 5 um, takes uh, well starts on Nimbus with uh, Cybok um, going toward the Federation ambassador, the Romulan ambassador, the Klingon ambassador ends up brainwashing them, whatever. Um, and they have this whole scene on Nimbus where the Enterprise with Kirk comes in and they try to uh, save these people. It's very, very, very cool. I like it. So um, they have put Nimbus in this game and there's a whole storyline basically based off of Nimbus now on the Federation side. Ensign Ricky needs to play this. He has not done it. So you got Secrets of Nimbus, The Lost City of Paradise, Blind Men tell, Tells, The Undying, A Fistful of Gorn, and then Installation 18. Also interesting about Nimbus is it's an open world, uh, open zone, which means uh, you're going to see a lot of people there because it's an open zone. And there's a uh, Contacts on Nimbus and even after you do this whole storyline there's still more stuff you can do on Nimbus you can go back to Nimbus and actually do a whole bunch of other things which I haven't done yet um, now I will say this there is a bug a huge bug in installation 18 and it is keeping me on my main character from finishing installation 18 and it has to deal with uh, beaming up a certain character at the end of that mission who refuses to beam up and so the mission will not continue and it's a huge bug it does not affect the Romulan faction but it does affect the Federation faction and maybe the KDF um, 
until they get that bug fixed I can't play this series for you because all that would happen is I would get to installation 18 and then be unable to finish the uh, mission for you and it would be an unfinished series so it sucks and it's terrible and I am I have sent a bug report off to cryptic of course I have posted in the forum everybody knows it I, I just hope cryptic is listening and they know it because this bug is keeping us from finishing installation 18 now once they fix this bug and it's confirmed that it's fixed then I will record the series and show this new this new stuff here uh, these new missions on the Federation side with Ensign Ricky so I'm gonna wait until that bugs fixed it just makes sense because otherwise we're gonna get to the end of this and then not be able to finish it and that would not make any sense at all so that's unfortunate um, everything else all the mission the rest of the missions are the same um, now here's what I've been doing on Ensign Ricky and something that I really want to show you I have been working on the reputation system um, when you probably last saw Ensign Ricky he was maybe at tier one I had worked on him a little bit and then showed you basically I have already done a video if you look back in the past videos on the Federation side there is a video I did specifically about reputation so this is an update to that video I have been working hard on reputation both new Romulus and Task Force Omega reputation on Ensign Ricky um, and it takes a long time and I'm still a good ways from finishing because once we hit tier 5 that takes the longest amount of time and there's a lot of grinding to be done so you're just gonna have to wait but once I get to tier 5 and it's all maxed out on both then I will buy the gear to upgrade Ensign Ricky and we'll go through all that process and everything and by that I mean upgrading him to his Mako uniform and all that stuff um, but even without that stuff you can still fight the Borg and this is something I haven't shown you guys yet is that is the STFs but obviously I've been doing them you can see I've got 1154 Omega marks from doing STFs uh, right now and I'm up to I'm almost at the end of tier 4 and uh, getting to tier 5 of Task Force Omega so I have been grinding a lot of STFs without Mako armor this is what I'm rocking on him he's got uh, where we left off basically the Jim Hadar armor Jim Hadar shield uh, and a type type 3 phaser rifle mark 11 all mark 11 gear uh, and I am able to succeed in ground STFs with this setup so you don't need Omega or Mako to do STFs successfully if you know the tactics and you are and you have some skill and some practice in um, you can succeed on the ground STFs without having to have all that fancy gear but obviously our goal is we want to get to the end of the Omega um, tier tier 5 so we can get the mark 12 Omega um, chest gear and shield and weapon and then in turn we'll unlock the helmet um, I have also successfully done all the optionals uh, this is also important in order to unlock the uh, visuals you need to successfully complete the optionals in all the STFs and I have done that I have done the I have successfully completed the optional and in infected ground in a cure a cure ground in um, um, Kittimer Accord ground and also in all three of those space versions so I have all the optionals completed on this character at this time and that's just something I haven't shown you yet um, but I went ahead and did it because I needed to have it done so that I can get my marks and then uh, unlock the visuals when we get to the end of it all. I, I of course will be showing the SCFs when I can get to that point. Um, but I want to get, I want to finish grinding and get to the end of my tier 5 Romulus and Omega. And then I will show you doing the STFs with the Jim Hadar gear without buying any of that extra stuff then I'll buy the stuff and then maybe do a repeat and show you the STFs with all that gear so we'll do a without and a with now where I am is on Task Force Omega you can see I'm almost at the end of tier 4 now 
and uh, we're working on to uh, at that point then we'll start working on tier 5 but it'll take a lot of uh, time to work through tier 5 tier 5 is the slowest one um, I've also selected the um, options that I want here which is weapon uh, Omega weapon proficiency I've got Omega weapon training and I've got regenerative shield augmentation plus five shoulder generation every one second so these are the three that I have s turned on right now and then when I hit tier four I, I will select the tier four option I want um, I don't have any of these stores unlocked I haven't wasted any marks yet unlocking stores I'm only going to unlock the stores that I need because stores are expensive to unlock they can be up to 180 um, ROM or 180 marks or more uh, once you get to tier 5 just unlocking a store so it can take a whole lot of marks to unlock a store so I'm gonna wait and unlock only the stores that I need uh, but here in a minute I'm gonna show you what all the stores look like because I have another character where I have them all unlocked um, so that's what's going on this is being worked on uh, and all this is going right now and once I get up to the max then we'll talk more about it same thing on the Romulan side I'm uh, right here in the middle on tier 4 working on tier 4 um, and again this also takes a very long time and these are the options I've chosen I've got lethality I've got uh, precision and I've got uh, reactive shielding and those are the options I chose on the Romulan side for right now and then when I when tier 4 is unlocked I'll select the tier 4 option uh, and again no stores unlocked on the uh, Romulan side yet I will wait and unlock only the stores that I want so I don't waste Romulan marks because it is so hard to get Romulan marks uh, basically I'm grinding um, I'm doing the Tau Dewa sector block patrols every single day uh, it's just a, it's a nightmare grinding for this stuff to be honest with you it eats up your energy credits as well and one other important factor that it, I, it didn't even bother me on my other characters, but it's bothering me here on Ensign Ricky because he hasn't done a lot, and that's expertise. I ran out of expertise in the in tier, uh, basically um, a few projects ago, um, just flat out, and it said, "Oh, no expertise left." <laughs> Now how do you view how much expertise you have when you start these projects and you click the button here for the expertise it'll tell you how much expertise you have another way you can know is to look at one of your characters and um, you've spent this many expertise and this is what you have so as you can see I don't have a lot of expertise so the expertise you have is the difference between 733,516 then minus 726,750. So the difference of that is the expertise that you have available. So as you can see, I don't have a lot available. <laughs> and um, I, don't, I don't have enough right now to even add another project. Uh, when, these, when those projects are done, uh, any of these projects I don't even have enough expertise to add one see one of these projects costs 9,000 expertise I don't even have enough to do one so I actually end up having to do a, t a lot more grinding than usual I actually end up having to go do dailies uh, which is something I've done on all my other characters way before the reputation stuff came out but I didn't I hadn't done it on Ensign Ricky and he, so he doesn't have like I have like millions of expertise on my other characters well in San Ricky he ran out really fast so what I've been doing is if you go to um, the Aurelius sector where the Breen stuff is I uh, look on the map real quick I'll just show you go to the Aurelius sector which is um, where are you Aurelius up here but basically you get to it by going to Ida Aridani, Ida Aridani and then right there on that edge uh, it'll connect you to Aurelius um, when you go there let's see where is my available you go to uh, Ambassador Sura uh, you can access it here in the hail or you can go straight to that sector block and uh, in the right hand corner uh, contact Ambassador Sura there are three um, things and these are daily so that means they're every 20 hours um, basically you do them once a day it's called aiding the deferi emancipation and rescue deferi captives 
Uh, all of them, or two of them, are actually um, the aiding the Deferi and the rescue Deferi captives. Let's see, are the actual missions, and one of them is one that like links them together, and you get a whole bunch of extra stuff, something like that. Anyway, you add all three, and then go do what's required, and then you turn all that in, and you get a lot of expertise and uh, a really good thing about it, you get a lot of dilithium. So I'm killing two birds with one stone by getting a lot of dilithium and expertise that I need. Of course, you're also getting um, XP as well, which at this stage of the game is useless, but you're still gaining XP with it. Um, so I'm getting XP, expertise, and dilithium, and I'm getting a lot by doing these. I'm getting enough to fill out my uh, my reputation uh, missions. However, I had just done one where I didn't have quite enough, so what I did is I went to Ida Eridani and I did the three the three um, dailies you can do in Ida Eridani, which is Triala System Satellite Repair. Um, then another one, which is not going to show up here, called the Schmar, which is by the Zibble System. And then there's another one called Alhina, which if you go there you can do the Distress Call. So basically three things or three systems in Ida Eridani and then the three missions, I guess you can call them missions, in uh, Aurelius. And uh, doing all that together earns me a ton of it. Well, not I say a ton, but really it earns me enough expertise to add four reputation missions. So I can add two on Omega and I can add two on Romulus and then I'm done. So I end up having to do this every single day in addition to doing Taldewa to grind for Romulan marks and then in addition to do STFs to grind for Omega marks. So as you can see, I'm just grinding up the wazoo here. It's a it's a grind fest that is just it's it's killer. I mean, it takes a lot of time. So this is what's been eating up a lot of my time. I know I haven't had a lot of videos lately. Uh, I, well, I've been working on Ensign Ricky. I've been wanting to get him up there so we can do more stuff with him. But I am finding that it is just a just a grind out of Hades. I mean, it's just I, it's just nuts. This game is nothing but grind now, and um, that's not necessarily fun. Cryptic, take note, not fun. <laughs> um, so, but it's necessary if I want to complete this right now. So. That's what I'm having to do. So, just, so, so just for Ensign Ricky, I have to do three systems in Ida Eridani, three missions in Aurelius. I have to do uh, the Tau Dewa sector, sector Patrol, and I have to do STFs, and I have to grind all of that, and not just do them, but I have to do them every single day, <laughs> in order to get enough expertise and enough marks and all that junk to keep everything going. It's a nightmare. But I want to get there because I need to show you guys, um, you know, eventually I'll want to buff, you know, Ricky up with all that gear so we can, you know, do more stuff. Um, but you can still succeed without all that stuff, I'm finding. I mean, I don't have any of that fancy stuff and I'm having no problems with STFs or anything, so, you know. Ah, so now that we've got all that reputation out of the way, uh, one thing I also have done on Ensign Ricky is I upgraded his ship. Uh, we are now flying the Chimera Heavy Destroyer. Um, this is different from the basically Enterprise E refit that we were flying before. And now uh, I am flying this. This is the Veteran Reward Ship. Now why did I go with this ship? Simply put, this game is extremely unbalanced between beams and cannons. Um, it's a DPS game, flat out, pure and simple. Um, you do not do a lot of damage with beams, and it takes a long time to kill the enemy with beams. However, if you've got cannons, dual heavy cannons, like three of them, like this, um, you're going to do a lot of damage and you're going to kill enemies fast. Why is this important? Well, I'm grinding, right? I'm grinding every single day, and I'm doing a ton of uh, stuff. I need to be able to kill my enemy as quickly as possible to get through the grind fest. The faster I can do it, the faster I can get my marks and level up and do all the junk I gotta do. So, 
pretty simple. I need a ship that can fire cannons and I have to go the cannon route because that's going to allow me to complete all this grinding the fastest. If I were using beams it was going to take me a whole lot longer. So I upgraded to a ship that can support cannons but I didn't want to use a ship that you might not have access to like in the sea store or one of those fancy you know lockbox ships or whatever. People that have subscribed to this game uh, have the lifetime subscription or the veteran you know 1000 day uh, time put in this game have this ship available to them for free and it's the Chimera Heavy Destroyer so um, it's 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 wound up being an incredibly good ship even with I don't even have you know the most powerful weapons on it and it's still really good um, I've got Mark 11 rare dual heavy cannons three of them and then I got mark 11 rare turrets in the back and I've got I took the quantum the wide angle quantum torpedo from the uh, refit uh, the last ship we had and put it on this one so now I can fire that quantum torpedo at extreme angles so it's real nice but the ship turns really fast anyway it moves really fast I've still got Aegis on see that's another thing that w I will want to upgrade when I hit uh, tier uh, 5 Omega is I will want to get the Mark 12 Mako deflector impulse and shield. I want that Mark 12 um, adaptive Mako actually uh, set. So that is one ship set I will be highly looking forward to but even with Aegis I'm not having that big of a problem in STFs. Just a standard warp engine right now. I've got the cutting beam on and, uh, and, and the console that connects to it and let's see do I have the other item no see the other item is the Omega torpedo which I don't have yet but at least I got the two piece bonus from this which is Omega weapon amplifier that two set bonus um, I don't even have the best consoles on right now but I did add three uh, phaser relays because I'm firing the phaser type energy so that really helps and then the special ability for the ship which is the uh, tactical system so um, it's a good setup and it is allowing me to grind and do a really good job in anything I, I do. Uh, I can kill Breen in an instant. <laughs> Breen are easier than the Borg with this ship. Uh, the, the Breen are just easy. I just I fly through them like butter so that's good for doing my uh, getting my expertise in Aurelius. Um, I well I fly through anything really. <laughs> the Borg really not a huge problem. Um, the ship is pretty good for all that. So that's what I'm doing right now. If you want to see what powers I have, um, here's the stations. And for some reason it's not showing. There's some kind of bug where it's not showing everything and it's driving me crazy. There are bugs galore in this game since Legacy of Romulus. Let's see if we beam up the space if we can view it a little bit better just to show you what I'm doing here. I'll go ahead and use this ship when we do the whole Wasteland series as well, although most of it's ground. I th actually, I think all of it's ground, so maybe it won't <laughs> even make an impact. But anyway, that's what the ship looks like. Very nice. Works well. Um, I've got the power to the Tachyon Inversion Beam to drain shields. I can switch into tactical mode, and then I've got the Phaser Lotus, which is nice. I've even got some Scorpion fighters that I launch uh, that I've been using and I've been saving up because I've been doing the DOF system too. I've been saving up the satellite turrets. Uh, once I run out of my Scorpion fighters, I'm going to replace it with satellite turrets and just use up all these satellite turrets. Just use them every time I can. Um, so let's see if we can view my powers now. There we go. So uh, as you can see, I've got emergency power to shields three, engineering team two, and emergency power to engines one, hazard emitters. For tactical, I got a full commander tactical station with this ship, so it's just totally awesome. Um, I am using attack pattern omega two, cannon rapid fire two, high yield, torpedo high yield two, tactical team one, uh, a little more engineering power. Remember, I am an engineer on this character. Polarized hull and science team too. I wanted to utilize a lot of engineering powers just to buff myself up uh, so I can stay in action and it's working really well. Um, so that is what Ensign Ricky is looking like. That is an Ensign Ricky update for you all. 
Um, there's where my dilithium is up to, 53,000. Oh yes, um, you probably noticed all this stuff over here. Um, as you progress on the Romulan side, new Romulus um, tiers, e after each tier, you get a new mission added. So Romulan, new Romulus tier one, you pass that, you get a new mission called, um, I think this is going inverted. I don't know which one is which now. I have to. <laughs> I forget which one is which. But basically, I'm I'm up, I'm up to tier three, so I have three of the missions unlocked, and I have not done them. I'm saving them, saving all of them. So when I get to tier five, I'll have five missions here. And these are all the missions from completing each tier in the Romulan section. And I'm going to make a uh, series recording of that. Because I don't know if anyone's ever done that yet uh, out there. But for those that want to know what the reputation Rom the, the Romulan reputation missions look like, um, I will record all that. But I have to wait till I finish tier 5 so that all five of them are here. And then I'll do them in order once I figure out what the order is. It's either sh secret shuttle codes or hidden camera. One of those is the first one. I don't know if it's inverted or not, but um, I will find out the right order and then I will do them in the right order. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, But we'll have to wait until I finish tier 5 to do that. So look forward to that series recording too and we will see what the Romulan reputation missions look like. I've done them all on my other characters, but I did them as they came out. I've never done them straight in order. So um, that'll be uh, fun to look at. That'll be something neat and new as well. So stay tuned and look forward to that. Again, more stuff to show you guys. Now, one thing I want to do while I still got your attention, hopefully I still have your attention. Please tell me I have your attention. Um, I want to show you what all of the reputation looks like unlocked. So it's not all unlocked on Ensign Ricky, but I have changed character. I've got another character where I just unlocked everything. I'm talking every store and Omega, every store a new Romulus. And this is my main character, the Doctor, and I have just unlocked every single store. It took a ton of marks to do it. But as you can see, I have, I have reached Tier 5 on Romulus, and I have reached Tier 5 on Task Force Omega, all unlocked. I have also unlocked every store. So if I go to Select Active Project, you will see there is not even a store option here anymore, Unlock Stores, because I've unlocked every store on Omega. We go to New Romulus, you will also see there is no store option. I have unlocked every store. So everything is unlocked and I have access to everything. I wanted to do that so I could see what is available in the stores. So let's start with Task Force Omega. When you unlock every store, this is what it looks like. These are all the, st the unlocks I had to do. Each one of these um, tabs is basically a store unlock. So that's a ton of store unlocks you can see. And it costs like a hundred and something, 120 um, Omega marks on each one you unlock so it cost like thousands of Omega marks to unlock every store and then you the items in the store are bought with dilithium let's maximize this so you can get the most viewage from it bring it down here bring it out it's about the best we can do right there but you can see the whole thing on the screen now so you've got mark 10 assault weapons and that is basically every 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 weapon unlock on Omega is anti-borg uh, anti-proton weapons uh, the mark 10 assault and you so basically you have three of each you've got mark 10 assault pistols rifles mark 11 assault pistol and rifles and then mark 12 assault pistol and rifles so I mean you know there's really no reason to unlock 10 or 11 because that to me is just a waste of marks 
Uh, that's why on Ensign Ricky, I'm going to be very... I'm, I'm only going to unlock what I need, because who needs 10 and 11 when you can just wait and get to Mark 12 and unlock just Mark 12? I mean, because obviously that's going to be the better weapon, right? Mark 12, that's the highest Mark level. It's going to be the best, best ones you can get. So why even worry about 10 and 11? But I went ahead and did it on this character just to show you what it looks like. Um, so you've got anti-Borg, anti-Proton, Blast Assault. Uh, you got uh, Assault Minigun and Full Auto Rifle. And then same thing um, for the Mark 11 version. It's just all that stuff of Mark 11 and then Mark 12, same thing. Then under Pistols you have Dual Pistols, you have Compression Pistols and Stun Pistols and Wide Beam Pistols. Under Rifles you have Split Beam Rifles high density beam rifles, and sniper rifles. And of course, each each 10, 11, 12 version is the same. It's just the higher marked version of that. So, under assault, there's your blast assault, assault minigun, and full auto rifle. Then under pistols, there's your dual pistols, compression, stun pistols, and wide beam pistols. And then rifles, you've got your split beam, high density, and sniper rifles. Um, and then you can look at the modifiers on these. They are really awesome. Um, critical stuff, damage, kickback, um, a lot of crit. There's a kickback. And anti-proton already has a crit advantage, so adding more crit to it is just a lot of crit. But uh, there's the stuff. Now the Borg, if you're wondering what the, uh, the uh, Borg does, you can right-click on one. Uh, it says right here, this explains what the Borg modifier does. This variant is rigged with a chaotic particle stream which penetrates and confounds Borg adaptation, adding a small amount of kinetic damage to each shot which cannot be resisted. So, that is what anti-Borg means. Anti-Borg means that it can sh do kinetic damage each time you shoot the Borg, and the Borg cannot adapt to it. Flat out, that's all there is to it. And all of these weapons have that Borg modifier. Because under Omega, that's the whole point. You're anti-Borg. So all of these weapons are anti-Borg. They all have that Borg modifier. So that's totally awesome. So if you don't want to use Mako or Omega weapons or whatever, these anti-Borg weapons are an excellent option against the Borg. And, uh, of course, you have access to the Mark 12 version once you hit tier 5. And again, it's up to you, but I, I mean, I would just save my marks and only unlock the Mark 12. I mean, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 600, and then counting all the, uh, that's probably like seven or 800 marks that you'd be saving, just, uh, just not even unlocking those. <laughs> All right, so that is the weapons. Now we come to consumables. You can unlock consumables. Immunosuppressant nanite injector, collective static grenade, advanced hypo adrenaline trigger, advanced power cell, anti-proton carrier wave, advanced shield charge, plasma resistance, elite hypo adrenaline trigger, elite power cell, anti-proton carrier wave, and elite shield charge. Really, the ones that I would maybe look at would be the hypos. I don't even use power cells or shield charges, um, but these hypos are nice. Gives a 10% chance to heal, plus 68.3 uh, uh, hit points and receiving damage for five minutes. So for five minutes, you got a little more health. That's nice. And then um, the the nanite injector uh, counteracts Borg assimilation. So if you're being assimilated, uh, you know you hit that. Um, but note, I mean, this costs 50 dilithium each time you pick one up, and this is 25, and once you consume it, it's consumed, it's gone. So it can get pretty expensive on dilithium if you buy a lot of these. So I have not even done any of them. I've just not found it necessary. I think the expense is too great compared to the benefit. I mean, I think they should be like maybe one dilithium each or something, you know. <laughs> then you could get like 20 of them, and it would be useful in an STF. But 20, uh, 20 times 50 is just too 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 much of a of, of a steep price for me. Borg prosthetics you can unlock uh, Mark 11 and Mark 12. It's two separate uh, store unlocks, and you get Borg prosthetics. You get uh, the Mark 11 or Mark 12 version of each. 
maintenance drone, medical drone, and tactical drone. I have not found these to be that useful. I've tried them. They're cheap, dilithium-wise, uh, but they're not that great. I've used the most powerful one, and I don't know. It just is not a weapon I would continue to use. However, I did put one on my science Borg officer on my main character. I gave him one of these prosthetics just because he's a Borg and it makes sense, but I, I don't know. I don't really find it that useful of a weapon. It doesn't really do that much damage. I mean, it, and well, it, it fires real slowly. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just not my thing. You can try it, but I just haven't found it to be that effective of a weapon. Uh, but this is maybe more useful to you, is Borg Duty Officers. Again, another store unlock. Um, you have rare, one of three, two of eight. And then you have very rare, five of six, and ten of ten. And then if you're KDF, you have the variant, the KDF variant of that as well. So for duty officers, these are really good duty officers to have. Uh, 15,000 dilithium each for the very rare, but useful. That's useful. So on the Omega side, what would I unlock? I'd unlock the Mark 12 type weapon that you want. And really, you only need to unlock one of the categories, really, that you want. Like if you want a rifle or you want an assault weapon or a pistol, you only need to unlock one type that you want, unless you want all three. But, um, you know, if you only want the high-density beam rifle or a split beam or sniper rifle, then you only, you only need to unlock the Mark 12 rifle. So that'll save you some marks if you don't have to unlock everything. Consumables, I wouldn't even waste my resources on it. Borg prosthetics, I wouldn't waste my resources, but the Borg duty officer, uh, that is worth it. So really not much useful the weapon and the and the doff, but that's my opinion. Everyone's opinion differs and everyone plays differently. So, But that's what's there. Now you can see what is there and um, what you might want to purchase. And of course, you'll always have access to the ground and space gear, um, like the Mako and Omega armor and shield, which um, we will get on Ensign Ricky eventually. Uh, and then the space gear, which I find more useful, which is the um, the uh, adapted Mako deflector dish, adapted Mako impulse engine, and adapted Mako uh, shield. Um, and that is Mark 12 on all of those. Uh, I'm, I'm using that, in fact, on this ship that I'm flying right here. Uh, this is what I will also put on Ensign Ricky. Um, and then each one costs a thousand marks each. See, these are expensive, so you really have to grind, even just for one of these, a thousand Omega marks. So you want all three for the, for the whole kit. It's going to cost 3,000 Omega marks just for that set way expensive but it is worth it um, but there are mark 10 and 11 versions of these I wouldn't even waste the resources I would save them because you're gonna need them you're gonna need those marks when you get to level 10 tier or I mean tier 5 level 10 tier 5 once you get to tier 5 you're going to need all all the marks you can get because even the mark let's look at the mark 10 Mako yeah you've also got the uh, simulated stuff too basically have access to everything but the uh, oh yeah the uh, simulated universal console you'll definitely want to get that I mean that alone costs 500 Omega marks but it's a good console I recommend it and if you put it uh, in with the uh, cutting beam and the Omega Torp you got that three-piece set so of course I've got that on there but then the cutting beam is uh, 500 marks as well but I, what, I, what I was going to show you is even the Mark 10 Mako stuff costs 500 marks each. So you're, you're better off just saving your marks until you get to the Mark 12, and which is going to unlock at Tier 5. Because you're going to need all the marks you can get <laughs> to buy this stuff. But that's all the space stuff. There's a lot. Oh, and then you've got the Omega side as well. Omega 10, 11, and 12. Deflector dish, impulse engine, and shield. A ton of stuff, actually. But to get the good stuff, you really just want to wait till. Um, and there's the torpedo, which goes with the kinetic cutting beam and the console. Uh, but you and that cost uh, how much? Five hundred. So to me, I would wait and just not like I'm doing on Ensign Ricky. I would just wait and not spend any resources on Mark Ten or Eleven. Not worth it. 
I would wait until you unlock tier 5 and you can then get the Mark 12 version of everything. Because eventually that's what you're going to want, want, right? Well, it's going to take a whole lot of resources to get that. So you're just wasting resources at 10 and 11. Uh, and then gr uh, we already looked at ground. So that's Omega. That's what's on Omega. Now let's look at Romulus. You max out Romulus. And uh, here is the store when everything is unlocked. Again, each tab is a store item that has to be unlocked. But with the Romulan side, what you get is you get ship weapons. You get a lot more ship weapons than you do on the Omega side. Uh, first, let's look at the ground weapons. You only get 11 or 12. You don't get Mark 10. So that saves you a bit of resources right there. You don't even have to worry about Mark 10 weapons on the Romulan side. But again, you have that choice between Mark 11 or 12. I would save resources, not unlock 11, and just wait and unlock 12. Because look, they're the same. The only difference is one's Mark 11 and one's Mark 12. <laughs> so I would wait and get the better one. You got Mark 11 pistols, Mark 12 pistols. And under that, you've got um, Romulan plasma, wide beam pistols, compression pistols, stun pistols, under rifles, you have high density beam, split beam, sniper rifles, basically the same as Omega, except these are now Romulan plasma weapons with their own set of modifiers. They do not have the anti-Borg technology though. And then um, the assault weapons, the assault minigun, and pulse wave. This is one thing that the Omega side did not have that for some, I don't understand why, but for some reason the Romulan side does is a pulse wave. Now a pulse wave is very useful in um, cure sp in cure ground. When you fight Armek, there's a tactic called uh, pulse wave hug, and you all get around Armek in a circle, really close to him with pulse wave weapons, and you pulse wave the crap out of him. It's a tactic that works, but for some reason there is no anti-proton, anti-borg, omega pulse wave weapon. Why? I don't know. That's stupid. There should be. But there is a Romulan pulse wave weapon. So you need to come to the Romulan side to get the Romulan plasma pulse wave. And it's very powerful. Mark 12 and you got good modifiers on it. Um, so that's what you're going to want to get. If you're going to uh, do the pulse wave hug, this is probably one of the best pulse wave weapons that you can get for that. So, um, yeah. Oh, I should mention there is a pulse wave weapon actually, but it's the adapted Mako. You have to ha you have to get the the Mark 12 adapted Mako pulse wave weapon, and it is it is in the ground set. So if you go to ground gear, it's Mako shield, adapted Mako personal weapon. That's it right there. The adapted Mako phaser pulse wave rifle but it's part of the Mako set. Of course, you can just get the weapon by itself. But what's unique is that it's you get it through by means of this way, which is gonna cost you 500 Omega Marks versus being in the store, which costs just Dilithium. And it does not have the anti-Borg modifier, which the anti-Proton weapons do. So uh, yeah, they have a pulse wave, but it is right there. It's the, it's, it's the part of the Mako set. Anyway, back to the Romulan stuff. Um, very good weapons on the Romulan side. So that's all the ground weapons. And I would just not waste resources on Mark 11. Just go for Mark 12 and just go for what thing you want. Um, but I have, I, I like the Romulan weapons, these Mark 12 ones. They are really, really nice. You could equip your whole um, bridge officer ground team with these Romulan Mark 12 plasma weapons and it'd be really awesome. Um, now, in it, one thing that the Omega side did not have that the Romulan, the Romulan, New Romulan side does is ship weapons. Um, you have an option between Mark 11 beams and Mark 12 beams. Um, obviously, again, don't waste resources on Mark 11, just go straight to Mark 12. And what you have is a plasma beam array, and you have dual plasma beam bank. And then you have all the different modifiers you can get with that. I would go with the accuracy times two. But if you didn't want that, you could, there's a ton of different modifiers. That's the only difference between these is the modifiers. But I think accuracy is more important for cannons and for 
beams accuracy is pretty much up um, but anyway you have a choice between a beam array and the dual beam bank so you can do Romulan plasma beam stuff um, or you can do cannon stuff. Um, they have regular plasma turrets to put on the back. Of course, we want Mark 12. You have uh, Romulan plasma turret Mark 12. Again, accuracy times two. That'd be awesome. Um, and then you have the Romulan plasma cannon and all the different modifiers. And then you've got dual cannons and dual heavy cannons. Let's go to Mark 12. So you have everything. You got turrets, you got cannons, you got dual cannons, and you got dual heavy cannons, and you got beam arrays, and you got dual beam banks. So basically, you've got every type of ship weapon available in Romulan plasma style. And all those are store unlocks for the Federation side. Totally awesome. If you want to have a Romulan build on the Federation side, I mean, right here, here you go. Um, buy them with dilithium after you unlock the store and um, you can get a really really nice setup on your ship so that's the store for Romulus and I like that there's a lot of good stuff there on Ensign Ricky I'm probably going to use those weapons because Ensign Ricky is not in a fleet I think um, the best the the next best weapon that I can get will be the Mark 12 uh, Romulan plasma weapons right there in the store and so that's what I plan to do I'll, I'll get dual heavy uh, Romulan plasma weapons Mark 12 on the ship and uh, that's what we'll use for Ensign Ricky because that's the next best weapon to the um, fleet weapons that you can get. All right, so what next? Let's see. Let's look at the uh, different other different options, other different things you can get um, beyond the store. Of course, you've got Romulan ground, space, and consumables. Let's look at consumables first. Um, <clears throat> This is the Tier 5 consumable. This is a Riemann Diplomatic Entourage. Claim a Tier 5 Riemann. I don't even know what it does, but you get it. It's a non-combat pet, so I don't know what the point of it is. And he is only available for 4 hours before he's consumed, so I don't even know what the point of that is. And that costs 10 marks, but why would you want that? I don't know. Lasts for 4 hours. Now this is more what you might want, is the Riemann Reinforcements. These are consumables, so you use them, they're consumed, and they cost 10, 10 Romulan marks each. Um, but this beams in two Riemann Guard Elites for one minute. So that'll beam in two Riemann Guard Elites that'll help fight with you for one minute, but then it's consumed and it's gone. And it requires other things too, in order to get it, obviously. All these things. Cost dilithium as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, Riemann reinforcement. These are even better. This is the Shadow Guard Elites. This is the Tier 5 version. This costs 10 marks, but 1,500 dilithium, 20,000 expertise. So, again, look how much expertise that costs. Wow, you really need to have a lot and other things just to get that. And, again, it's only one minute. It only lasts for one minute, but it, it, it beams in a Shadow Guard Elites for a minute. I don't really see the use in all this stuff because the cost is too high. And it only lasts for a minute. If it lasted, like, you know, a week... <laughs> That'd be more worth it. Riemann Reinforcements, Shadow Guards, uh, Romulan Diplomatic Entourage, again, that's just a pet. Romulan, now here's the space part of that. Romulan Distress Call, Bird of Prey. You can call in a Bird of Prey to help you fight. But again, it only lasts for one minute. And it costs 10 marks. It costs $1,250 lithium, 9,000 expertise, and other stuff. Uh, you can call in a Dederdex battleship. Totally awesome. Have a Dederdex on your side. It only lasts for one minute, though, and it costs 10 marks, 1,500 dilithium, 16,000 expertise, and other stuff. So, you know, it's really expensive to get this stuff, and it only lasts for one minute. That's why I don't really use this stuff. It's just not worth it. You know, it's just too expensive to be worth it. But you can, you can call it a Mogai, um, a security team. Even the security team is expensive. 10 marks, 1250 dilithium, 1500 expertise, and then that only lasts one minute. A strike team, same thing. It's all only going to last one minute. These are great consumables, but they only last one minute, and then they're gone, and then it costs a whole lot of resources to buy new ones, so it's just not worth it. I'm already grinding enough. I don't need to grind for consumables that only last a minute. Know what I'm saying? Now, beyond the store 
ship weapons that you can get that we looked at. They have all the types, Romulan Plasma. There are some unique ones available. First of all, there is a Romulan set. There is a deflector, impulse engine, and shield set. A uh, Riemann and a Romulan set, I should say. And there's rares and Mark 11s and 12s and different versions. Again, just get the Mark 12. Like, here's the rare Mark 12. I wouldn't even bother. I'd just go with the very rare. So let's just look at it. Very rare purple Mark 12 Riemann space set deflector. I mean, it's going to cost you 750 Romulan marks. Plus that other stuff. 64,000 expertise. Wow. And 32,000 dilithium. See, these things are expensive. That's why you want to save your resources. But here's a it, it's a Riemann set, Mark 12 very rare Riemann set, deflector, engine, and shield. And then you also have Romulan space set. You have deflector, engine, and shield. So you got a Riemann set and a Romulan set. What's the difference? I have no idea. I haven't even looked at all these things yet. There's so many different options. I really need a sheet in front of me that like compares all these things side by side because uh, looking at it in this format is kind of hard to compare. Like if I want to compare this Romulan shield, I can read that, try to keep that information in my head, and then scroll back up to the Riemann shield, which is here, and then look at that and try to compare. <laughs> That's the best way to compare. That's the only way to compare. Um, which kind of sucks because it's hard to compare things. Uh, it looks like there was a higher capacity with the Riemann one, but I mean, you know, it's hard to compare, like, which things do you want? But all that stuff's available, it's just hard to compare it all, and they need a better way to, to look at this. Things that you, uh, they need an option where you can, like, click it, and then click a compare button, and it comes up on this side, and, like, compares the items side by side. That would be totally boss, right there. There is an advanced, this is this is nice that the right one side have, is they have a uh, scorpion hanger. So if you got a hanger on your ship, hanger bays, you can add the scorpion fighter hanger bay to your ship. Um, now they have the, just the advanced scorpion fighters, which is very rare, but they have even better. They have elite scorpion hanger pets, ultra rare. These are really nice right here. Um, probably expensive, what does it require? 240 Romulan marks, 35,000 dilithium. Duty off it requires 30 engineering or operations duty officers. Holy camoli. 64,000 expertise. It requires five peregrine fighters. So you have to have five peregrine fighters just to get this. Holy mon monkey butt. 30 warp core coils. This is expensive. Boy, it'd be nice, but my gosh, it's expensive. But it's there. Now here's part of the um, experimental set or the three-piece set. On the Omega side you have the cutting beam, the console, and the Omega Torp. On the Romulan side you have what's called the experimental Romulan plasma beam. That's part of the three-piece set. And you have the um, hyperplasma torpedo launcher. That's part of that set. And then you have the uh, zero point energy conduit and that's part of that set so those are the three pieces to make up the what's called the Romulan singularity harness uh, I want that on one of my Federation ships I have the zero point energy module and I have the hyperplasma torpedoes on one of my characters but I do not yet have the experimental beam array but once I get that on my ship, and then I will have that complete Romulan singularity harness on my on one of my characters, who is uh, the last Doctor, the engineering character. And you got a set two bonus plasma conductive circuitry, set three bonus plasma hyperflux. But it's a whole Romulan set, and I want to have it on at least one ship so I can see what it's like. Um, so it was really expensive to get all this stuff, but you know, I'm working on it. So that's the space stuff. Now let's look at the uh, ground equipment. Um, you can requisition a Romulan plasma flamethrower. I have not used this yet. I, have not, I do not have one, but it is a plasma flamethrower. It's a very rare ground weapon. There you go. There's the stats on it. I don't know if it's useful or not, but there you go. <laughs> you tell me because I have no idea. And that's all that's available is that flamethrower. 
So that is all of the Romulus stuff unlocked. So now you've seen what is available on the reputation in the reputation stuff when everything is unlocked. A ton of stuff is available to you. The main issue is that it takes a ton of resources to purchase the stuff. You've got the marks that you have to grind for. You have the expertise that you need to have. You have the dilithium for each thing. And then you have to buy components, like you go to your replicator and you have to buy, you know, I'm constantly, I'm constantly buying industrial energy cells, communication arrays, shield generators, weather control systems, industrial replicators, warp coils, self steel all these things. I am constantly buying a ton of this stuff for all of this. And then you have to go here to requisition personal equipment purchase consumables and I'm also buying a ton of large shield charges large hypos um, major regenerators come on everybody knows what I'm talking about this stuff is just ridiculous the amount of stuff that you have to buy in addition to get all these things it is extremely expensive and you end up grinding and it all costs energy credits when you buy I mean look my main character only has 700,000 energy credits I've just used up every resource I've had getting to this point it's ridiculous it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't be that hard that long that grindy to me it just sucks I mean I want all that stuff but my gosh and we haven't even talked about the new one yet Nukura Strike Force that was added with Legacy of Romulus I mean eventually I'm gonna have to start grinding for that one <laughs> Ensign Ricky's got a lot of work ahead of him and all my characters do because look I haven't even started on it here in my main character and I got like 10 characters in Star Trek Online it's gonna it's gonna take me like a decade <laughs> years and years and years to get all this stuff because I've got 10 characters it's just too much folks too much grinding too much I mean I want all this stuff it's awesome it's good stuff but my gosh I don't have time to spend five hours in this game every day you know I got a full-time job come on cryptic I don't got time for this. I need this stuff to just move faster and less resource, spend less resources and go faster. Um, they have a 20 hour waiting period, you know, on each mission, on each um, thing you add in the reputation system. It used to be longer when it first came out. It was like two days or something. Well, I think it needs to be cut back even more. It needs to be like six hours. I'm not, I'm not joking. You need to be able to do four projects. You can do two projects a day right now. You need to be able to do four projects a day. I'm saying double it, man. Double it to four projects a day. Let us do four projects a day and reduce the cost. The cost is too expensive. Reduce the dilithium. You know, reduce the expertise. Reduce the, you know, hypos. In fact, just do away with all that extra stuff. I have to add like hypos and regenerators and industrial replicators and self-stealing stem bolts and all that just useless junk and crap do away with that and just let me spend the dilithium expertise uh, and or you know and stuff on it that I need to and uh, and let it let it just be that you know <laughs> let it just be a few things a few things I need to spend not a ton not a handful that's my opinion anyway and there's my rant so now you all heard my rant on the reputation system I think I think it's awesome in theory the idea of it is completely awesome but the amount of grinding that you have to do to get this all the stuff to not just to tear up but also to buy the equipment and the fact you have to also buy the store unlocks I think the store unlocks just come automatically you reach tier one bam tier one store unlock automatically instead of having to spend marks to unlock the darn store to get to it <laughs> that's just ridiculous come on cryptic we are not we are not stupid and we are not going to continually you know do this kind of thing a lot of us just don't have the time to do it help us out a little come on anyway as you can see on this character I'm stuck on um, installation 18 the last as we were talking about earlier the last of uh, Wasteland. I've done every mission except Installation 18. I cannot finish it because of the bug. It's just bam, it won't. I've done it like 20 times and it will not work. So, 
until they get that fixed, I'll wait until and record those um, episodes for you all after it's fixed, because otherwise you're just going to sit here like I am with Installation 18 in your mission window for, for weeks. <laughs> and that's it. That's all you can do. So come on, Cryptic. Get track together. But, alright. Other than that, I have now shown you the reputation system entirely. I think we've covered that more than enough. <laughs> and I've shown you that I will be doing more stuff with Ensign Ricky. We've got Wasteland to do. We've got the uh, Romulan reputation missions to do. I also have KDF stuff to do. Yes, there is a new KDF tutorial. There is new KDF content, new missions on KDF. I've got that to do. I will get to it all. Just give me some time, <laughs> please. Um, I will get to it all, and I will show you all of it. Um, but I wanted to cover that and um, just show you that because I'm very proud of at least getting one character maxed out on the reputation system, at least for the Romulus and Omega stuff, and uh, all the stores unlocked. Uh, now about the new Kara Strike Force, that's probably going to take me a whole year. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be honest, it's not on the top of my list. I'm, I'm trying to get the, the Romulus and Omega stuff done on all my other characters first before I get do the new Kara Strike Force. So. Anyway, um, that's how it goes. It's just gonna. It's just all gonna take time, 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 time. Not enough time. But uh, I'll do what I can and show you all. I hope you enjoyed that update. This probably was a lengthy video, but hopefully it is helpful to somebody out there. Uh, so if you have stayed through this video until now, the very end, uh, thank you so much for watching and hearing me ramble on and on and on and on and on and on. And uh, 